The James Webb Space Telescope, a marvel of modern astronomy and human engineering, had its gaze fixed on the farthest reaches of the cosmos when it did something unexpected. It turned back. Originally designed to peer deeper into the universe than ever before, exploring the earliest galaxies, exoplanets, and phenomena beyond the reach of the Hubble Space Telescope, Webb's sudden pivot to look back toward the inner universe sparked immediate interest and concern across the scientific community. When the first data sets were reviewed, a chilling realization spread across researchers and analysts. What the telescope saw wasn't just unexpected, it was exactly what many feared might one day be revealed. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. Webb's turn back wasn't a mistake, it was an intentional maneuver, carefully planned based on prior anomalies that had been recorded but not fully explained. The universe, vast and mostly dark, occasionally emits signals or patterns that don't conform to established cosmological models. For months, there had been a growing body of irregular infrared data, subtle distortions, light echoes, and background interference that couldn't be reconciled with known phenomena. These blips were dismissed by some as data noise, but others weren't so sure. After much deliberation, a decision was made. Webb would shift its gaze away from deep time and instead focus inward toward the region of space relatively near our own galactic neighborhood. The results were unsettling. Webb's instruments are capable of capturing astonishing detail across infrared wavelengths, making it the ideal tool for detecting objects cloaked in dust, distant in time, or radiating in frequencies our eyes can't see. When it looked back, it began observing zones previously studied only loosely due to limitations in older instruments. The telescope homed in on several star systems within a few hundred light years of Earth, zeroing in on patterns in the background radiation and energy distributions that shouldn't have been there. Instead of clean, predictable arrangements of stellar energy, Webb recorded fluctuations, like shadows cast not by objects but by something else entirely, something interfering with space-time itself. The most disturbing aspect of Webb's data wasn't a single structure or anomaly but a pattern, a highly specific repeating distortion across several sectors. These distortions seemed artificial in origin, not random. Energy signatures that appeared to be deliberate, synchronized, and embedded with a logic so precise it bordered on design. The light curves from several stars were dipping in ways consistent with massive structures orbiting them. Not unlike the theoretical concept of Dyson spheres, but these were not symmetrical or complete. They were fragmented, massive, yet broken, more like ruins than active constructs. The implications were grim. Evidence of advanced megastructures possibly destroyed. Many had speculated that if we ever detected such megastructures, they would mark the triumph of an alien civilization, the kind of species capable of harvesting the full energy of their host star. But what Webb saw wasn't progress, it was aftermath. The configurations were chaotic, disintegrated as if by some cataclysm. The readings included erratic heat signatures, inconsistent emissions, and gravitational warping that couldn't be explained by any known planetary or stellar arrangement. There was no sign of life, only the eerie traces of intelligence once present, now absent, and it wasn't isolated. Multiple systems scattered across this part of the galaxy showed the same patterns. Something had happened to them. Something that left no survivors, no signals, no warnings, only debris and silence. The fear that emerged among scientists wasn't rooted in the idea of alien life existing. That had always been a hope. The true fear was that life, intelligent, advanced life, had already existed and met an end that defied understanding. The symmetry of the destruction across distant systems hinted not at natural collapse, but coordinated annihilation. Webb's infrared sensors picked up what could only be described as the footprints of that destruction residual radiation burns, zones of absolute zero temperatures surrounded by high-energy chaos, and inexplicable geometric voids where physics itself seemed to misbehave. It wasn't just destruction, it was erasure. As Webb gathered more data, its findings began to converge on a particularly disturbing possibility. The destruction seemed to move in a pattern, one not originating from within these systems, but from the void between them. Whatever had caused these collapses hadn't risen from inside the star systems themselves. It had come from outside, sweeping through space with calculated indifference. Its progression left behind nothing but silence and entropy. There were no distress signals, no artificial transmissions, nothing to indicate resistance or escape, just vast, empty echoes. The implications of this were staggering. 
For decades, theories such as the Great Filter had tried to explain the Fermi Paradox. If the universe is teeming with planets and potentially life-supporting conditions, where is everyone? Why don't we see the evidence of galactic empires, interstellar commerce, or even rogue signals from distant civilizations? The data from Webb now suggested a horrifying answer. Perhaps we don't see them because something ensures we never do. Some force, natural or not, that cleans the slate before civilizations can spread too far, grow too loud, or become too noticeable. Scientists across disciplines began connecting the dots. The signals that Webb intercepted, ghostly pulses beneath the radiation background, complex mathematical harmonics too regular to be chance, were not simply cosmic leftovers. They might be remnants of communication between civilizations trying to warn each other, or worse, patterns embedded by whatever had caused their end. The latter thought sent shivers through research teams. What if these signals weren't echoes of life, but bait? Webb's camera captured high-resolution images of nebulae once thought to be star nurseries, now revealed as something else entirely. Regions scarred by forces too orderly to be natural, yet too vast to be explained by technology as we understand it. One such image, nicknamed the Shattered Halo, displayed a ring of debris stretching over light years, moving with such precision that it maintained formation despite the gravitational influence of nearby bodies. Within this halo, all forms of detectable matter had been stripped to subatomic silence. Webb's data indicated that even quantum fluctuations were suppressed within the region. Space itself had been rewritten. This revelation plunged many in the scientific community into silence. If there was a force or mechanism capable of erasing regions of the universe at the most fundamental level, then it wasn't just life that was at risk. It was existence itself. The theoretical constructs that emerged were terrifying. Interstellar cleansing waves, dimensional collapse fields, entropy weapons or worse, intentional targeted extinction protocols embedded in the physics of reality. Not only were these ideas plausible under Webb's new data, but some of them were supported by what Webb couldn't see. Entire sectors were simply missing. The absence of expected background radiation in certain galactic quadrants suggested a level of destruction beyond comprehension not just of stars or planets, but of time itself. The light that should have been reaching us from those ancient sectors never arrived, and Webb's instruments confirmed it wasn't blocked or delayed. It was simply gone. These holes in the fabric of the cosmos couldn't be explained by black holes, dark matter, or any known exotic physics. It was as if someone had reached into the universe and cut pieces out of it. As Webb continued scanning and interpreting these anomalies, one final pattern emerged and it was the most unsettling of all. The progression of destruction appeared to be moving closer, not in a direct path, but in a kind of spiral, as if orbiting or enclosing something. Some theorists speculated it was converging on a location of interest. Others feared the spiral might be a method of compression, hurting remnants of life or civilizations into tighter zones. Either way, Earth now appeared not outside the spiral, but near its predicted edge. No direct threat was detected, no beam, ship, or force heading toward us. Yet the data strongly suggested that what had happened elsewhere could, one day, happen here. If the cause of the destruction was a natural cosmological event, like a new class of star death or spatial anomaly, then perhaps it might be studied, even mitigated. But if it was artificial, if it was the work of a higher intelligence or a galactic scale protocol, it would mean something more disturbing that the galaxy or some ancient part of it is hostile to advanced life. And then came the most disquieting revelation. There had been signs. Earth's radio silence from the cosmos, the absence of alien contact, the void of meaningful extraterrestrial signals. It might not be coincidence or limitation. It might be survival, a defense mechanism of the universe itself or of life to remain hidden, to not attract attention, to stay quiet lest we are found. The James Webb Space Telescope, with its immense capabilities, might have looked too far and too clearly. By turning back, it may have broken a rule written not in stone but in silence. There's a haunting possibility that the universe is not a quiet, empty canvas waiting for us to paint our story across its stars, but a dark forest where silence is survival and visibility is death. Webb's observations did not confirm the presence of an alien empire or the arrival of some benevolent watchers. It confirmed what many had quietly feared, 
we are not alone, but no one else is left. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us. What are your thoughts on James Webb confirming what we all feared? Predictions? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.